Tomorrow on the weekday show, I'm going to have Bob on longer than 45 minutes. We're going to take a few of your calls for him here in just a moment. Got Jordan Maxwell for an hour coming up next. Talk about who the guys are that run this whole thing, the whole esoteric agenda. Had him scheduled weeks ago. Bob, there's so much to cover, but, I mean, you and all the other experts I've talked to keep saying it's going to really get bad in the next few years. But things are already bad. They're getting worse. People are finally starting to see the inflation on the ground, not just overseas. Uh, how do you see this playing out? And then also, who do we blame? I mean, we know it's the globalist engineering this. We have their own plans. But, you know, we need to get this out to the public now so that the people that have engineered this in the establishment don't pose as the saviors again. We already have the private Federal Reserve wanting a global government, wanting global carbon taxes as their next Ponzi scheme to get control of us. Break that down. Well, I think the uh, the main cog, and I'm sure Craig Roberts will agree with me, is doing away with the Federal Reserve. And uh, that would be a good start. And we can take the people that belong to the United, Na- uh, the uh, Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the known Bilderbergers, and start running investigations on them. And at the same time, also go after the people who have been in the last two administrations, uh, not only uh, in the Treasury Department, but also in Justice and in the Pentagon, and start tearing apart what they've done. And then start bringing criminal charges. I mean, this is the best way to solve the problem, to get rid of these people once and for all. And this is criminal. They have looted us. Can you explain to the layman out there how we've been systematically looted? Well, they control everything. And the only people who make big money are the ones who are in control. And they do what they want to do, as you've seen the administration and Congress blatantly just move along around the law. Uh, they defy the con- uh, Constitution. Uh, you saw the uh, FISA, which was passed last week, which is blat- blatantly unconstitutional. Uh, the ACLU uh, uh, filed a lawsuit. It'll probably get into the Supreme Court in about a year and a half. And it, uh, the legislation will be nullified. But it's just the blatancy of what they're doing. And so they all know each other. They're all hooked up and connected. And if something's going down where you can make money or uh, go around the law or if some event like 9-11 is planned, you stay away from the building, and they know all that stuff. And this is what we've got to prove. We also have to show how they have violated the intent of the Working Group on Financial Markets, which is the, uh, the um, executive order which was uh, 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 signed by Ronald Reagan in August of uh, of 1988. The Plunge Protection Team, explain what that does. I mean, that's that's insider trading right there. Every day, 24 hours a day in every market in the world. It's admittedly well, rigged, but the public doesn't know that. Explain to them briefly, and I want to take a few calls. Well, what, 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 uh, what the president did at the time was set up the framework uh, that a group within government and outside government as well, because the Fed's not in government. Uh, they're a private corporation. That they could go in emergencies and do things that they wouldn't normally do. What they have bastardized this thing into is the interpretation, which is distorted like everything else that they do, is when we think there's any kind of a threat whatsoever, because of terrorism in this case, we can rig the markets 24 hours a day all over the world. And they selectively go into global markets, the NASDAQ, Standard & Poor's, uh, I mean, whatever uh, stocks they want, and then they some days put tens of billions in to select funds that they like. Total criminal cronyism, and they've been caught doing it. I mean, do Americans know that Richard Grasso, the former head of the uh, of the New York Stock Exchange, went to Columbia and publicly at a press conference said, invest your cocaine money with us? Uh, but the, the average American doesn't even know they're drug dealing in front of everyone. But they know the public is like Miss North Carolina. You know, I was watching Beavis and Butthead. They were re-airing it the other day on TV, and I hadn't seen it in decades. And I was watching Beavis and Butthead, and did you know they are smarter in that cartoon than the average American now? I mean, actually, watch Beavis and Butthead and then watch the average college student, and they can't even talk, Bob. I know. It's tragic. And what you say about Grasso is... Uh... Uh, is true, and that's why he uh, won his lawsuit because 
that was the part of the mafioso money laundering deal. And that's all they were doing was laundering money. And he was down there to get that money to run it through the New York Stock Exchange. I mean, why else would the head of the New York Stock Exchange be in the jungles of Colombia with FARC, which supposedly is a Marxist organization? Well, he was publicly hugging him. It was in the news at the time. No, I saw it. I saw the pictures. No, you're absolutely right. But that's why he was there. All the great fortunes in the last thousand years have been made from the proceeds of drugs. The position of the royal families of Europe, which are called the black nobility, they were the ones that started it. And for those that and don't that's know... that's why they're filthy rich. That's right, and exactly, and, and those routes out of Asia. For those that don't know, the mafia in this country for the nine years of prohibition, they lobbied, in some cases, 10% of their proceeds to keep that law in place. And, and then they literally threw fits... And, and, and threatened people and did everything when prohibition was ended. Don't you understand the big drug cartels, folks, want drugs illegal. It puts money into it. It gets the criminal element involved. When cocaine and heroin were sold on store shelves, hardly anybody was on it. But, the, again, you can't, you can't explain that to people. They want to be slaves. Let's take a few calls for Bob Chapman. Learn more at internationalforecaster.com. Uh, let's go to Jay in Cape Cod. Question for Bob Chapman. You're on the air. Go ahead, Jay. Hey, thanks a lot, guys, for taking my call. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I have a question. I was going to, you know, purchase some gold, but I was wondering, in a situation like that, if there's some sort of, like, inflationary depression, uh, how would it be useful to even own gold? Like, well, gold no, well I, mean, gold? I mean, you have to ask yourself, the, the gold uh, you can always sell for whatever the rate of the fiat currency is at the time, and they're... Bloomberg's talking about gold at 5000 I'm not saying that, but I mean, it's certainly going up. Uh, at what, 1980s levels, it's like 2300 is is what it should be for inflation. And, right. and, and, and so the fiat currency, they can totally devalue. They can sell your paper, your stocks, your bonds are all worthless tomorrow. Bob, you want to explain this to him? Well, when the dollar goes down, especially in an inflationary environment, and that's what we have right now, uh, even though the, co the economy is stagnant, so you call it stagflation. Uh, when you have that situation, when the dollar is going down because of that inflation, some assets will go up in value to offset that. Uh, we've seen that happen in commodities, and it's happening in gold and silver. The only reason that gold and silver are not higher is that the Working Group and Financial Markets, a plunge protection team, has been suppressing it since 1988. And they will continue to do so as long as they can. And by the way, but, I mean, in real financial circles, uh, circles, listeners, that is common knowledge. Go ahead, Bob. Absolutely. And so as the value of your, your currency, the dollar, goes down, the value of gold and silver are going to go up. And that's going to continue until inflation ends and we have a deflationary collapse. And then let's say that gold is $5,000 an ounce. It could come back down to 4500 but that's the extent of it. But at the same time, the stock market, which was 14100 might be 4000 on the Dow. And we know the house prices have already come down precipitously, and they've got a long way to go. That's right. Gold and precious metals historically will maintain or get more value during an inflationary uh, trend. Correct, sir? Right. Uh, usually numismatic coins will do... Uh, twice as well, if not more. Okay, let's take a quick call, and we got to let Bob Chapman go. Uh, let's go real fast to another call for him. Let's talk to Sam in Deutschland. You're on the air from Germany. Quickly, Sam. All right. Hey, Bob. Uh, I have a quick question. The question is, I was wondering how you see the economic depression or collapse in the United States affecting Western Europe, and also, uh, you know, do you think there's going to be a real high rise of anti-Americanism here in Europe, and maybe it's safer for Americans to go back home, or what's your views on that? Well, first of all, I can understand the anti-Americanism because of the antics of the United States government. And, and it's not only in Europe, it's all over the world. Uh, I think in Germany it's probably around 65 to 67 percent. But you go into some South American and Eastern European countries and uh, Asian countries as well, and you'll have it over 80 percent. Bob, so. real fast, you know, uh, Ted Anderson was in Buenos Aires down there with his fiance, and I had him on the show Friday. He said they're not wanting dollars in Buenos Aires. That's correct. They're taking euros, oh and that's God. the currency. But um, and uh, you know, in another program, we'll get into the euros. But um, the PMI, uh, the uh, the producer, uh, the um, 
the purchasing managers index in Europe dropped below 50 several months ago. And it's headed lower, and, and it's affecting the whole world. Bottom line, we're going into an inflationary depression. Is that 100% with the current policies? Yes. Bob Chapman, I don't want to No one's you... going to escape, believe me. No one's going to escape. Okay. Bob, let me put you on hold. Make sure you're set up for tomorrow. And God bless okay. you at the internationalforecaster.com. Great info. Check it out. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. All right. Jordan Maxwell, straight ahead. Tons of news and your phone calls. Second hour. You don't want to miss it. You get real info here, folks. The Headline.